Hi, Terry Van Ryden here. Today I'm talking about focus stacking with the Nikon Z9. While focus stacking is primarily used in close-up work, we can also use it for our landscape work to extend the depth of field. There are, however, a few things you need to do first to set up your Nikon Z9 before you start focus stacking. The process of focus stacking is where you take several images at different focus points and use a software to merge those images together, taking the best focus parts from each image and merging them into one beautiful razor sharp image. The idea is to have a complete edge to edge sharpness in your images. The old fashioned way of focus stacking is simply advancing the focus manual either by hand or by using a rail system. However, with the Z9 and other camera models, you can set up the camera to advance your focus for you. Before we had access to focus stacking, just to get a moderate amount of depth of field, we were shooting at very tiny f-stops like f22, f29, f32. While this gave us more depth of field, it never really gave us quite enough. The larger problem was that we were photographing with our lenses set in the worst possible way to give us the poorest image quality in terms of sharpness when you consider the degrading aspects of diffraction. If you're not sure what diffraction is, it's a process of the way light bends when it goes through a small opening that reduces the sharpness of the image onto the sensor. While we can certainly get more depth of field by shooting an F22 and 32, our images suffer due to always being shot at an f-stop that yields the most diffraction. Thus, we're left with images that just aren't very sharp. Today, with focus stacking, we now have the ability to shoot images with a tremendous depth of field, and we can set our lenses to shoot at the sharpest quality possible. Focus stacking software. There are many software companies out there for focus stacking, with the big three being Heliacon, Zareen, and Photoshop. They all do focus stacking, but how they achieve the same results are different, and some programs are easier than others. My choice for focus stacking software is Helicon. I know it's yet another program you have to work with, but I like the job it does and the ease that it's done with. I encourage you to test other softwares and methods until you find what you like. Since most of the software is on a trial period, you can have plenty of options to check them all out. Since focus stacking begins in the camera, I'll set up the Z9 to properly get my focus stacks accurate. I like to use electronic flash with my close-up images, and you can achieve similar results with some of the new LED continuous lights or even available light. To make your exploration of focus stacking of close-up easier, start with a stable subject, not a plant moving in the breeze or a fast-moving insect. I suggest starting with a controlled environment. Take a flower example inside where you don't have any movement of air. Set up your camera and close-up equipment to start taking your photographs. I'm using the Nikon Z9 with a 105 micro lens and an FTZ2 adapter. Now, if you're wondering if focus stacking works with older lenses and the adapter, I found that it works just fine. The basis of this procedure is to get your first focus at the very tip of the front of the subject. Take a shot, then move the focus a tiny bit to get the next level in focus. As you can imagine, this could take a lot of shots. You can also imagine that being precise in the levels of focus is important. So coming up with a system to get this repeatable is paramount. The common trap that people fall into is thinking that just manually focusing the lens by hand a little bit at a time will achieve the same results. That's unlikely. It's possible, but not very consistent. That's why I opt to have the Z9 do all of this work for me. It's precise and repeatable. To set up the Z9 for focus stacking, look for the menu item, Focus Shift Shooting. This is found at the very bottom of the photo shooting menu. Go into the menu, click on the little camera, the first one on the top left side of the menu. Open that menu, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and the very last selection you'll find is Focus Shift Shooting. 
A shortcut you can use inside of that shooting menu is to just simply scroll up. Once you reach the top of any Z9 menu, it'll start scrolling from the bottom up. So you might find it faster that way. I use focus shift shooting so often that I put it into my menu so that I can have quick access to my focus shift shooting at any time. When you get into focus shift shooting, beginning at the top is the start button. This is the button when activated will start the focus shift shooting program. So this is the button you use when you want to start the program. But don't press it just yet. You have to set up some parameters. The first parameter you need to set is the number of shots you want in your stack. On the Nikon Z9, you can tell the camera you want up to 300 shots in an image stack. Most of the time, only 20 or 30 images are needed for landscape images. However, 200 plus images is not out of the realm for close-up work. I usually leave mine on about 200 images unless I'm doing something really extreme in close-up. This number will tell the camera how many shots you want to take for this session or stack of photographs. If you're using this function for landscapes, the Z9 will stop firing when the focus gets to infinity, so putting the large number in won't affect your outcome. If your number is set at 300 and your camera only needs 34 shots to get to infinity, then that's what you'll get, 34 shots in a stack. The next menu item is focus step width. This option allows you to pick how wide or narrow the focus should be between shots. It's designated from one to 10. One is narrow and 10 is wide. For example, if you're shooting at F16, you could make this step wider towards the number 10 and thereby having less exposures to deal with since depth of field would fill in in between the shots. But the name of the game is not making less exposures, but taking steps to get that razor sharp image quality. To ensure you're getting razor sharp images, choose an F-stop that's the sharpest part of your lens typically around two stops over wide open on your lens. So if I'm using a, a 2.8 lens, then I do my stacking at f5.6. The goal is to get the sharpest image from front to back, not save on image count. I always put this focus step with it one, the narrowest, to make sure that I'm covered. Yes, it's gonna generate more images in a stack, but at least I know I'll have everything in focus. My goal is to get the best image my camera and lens combo can create. I want to get razor sharp final images. And speaking of razor sharp images, if you'd like to learn more about getting your wildlife images razor sharp, check out my new ebook, Razor Sharp Nature Photography, available only on my website at imagelight.com. This ebook takes you through the steps of getting razor sharp images from simple aperture selection to what shutter speed you should use with long telephoto lenses. I go over post sharpening software, how to buy a good tripod, and there is a full step-by-step -step on focus stacking along with many other professional keys to getting razor sharp images. Many people struggle getting razor sharp quality in their wildlife and landscape images. Razor sharp nature photography is easy to follow along and learn the techniques of getting that professional level of sharpness. Go to the digital products section of my website, imagelight.com and download your copy today to load onto your iPad or smartphone and take it with you on your next photo adventure. I'll also have a link in the description below. I'd also like to give a big thank you to all the photographers who've already bought and downloaded my ebook, Razor Sharp Nature Photography. I really appreciate all the kind words that you've said about the book and also thank you for supporting my videos and podcast by purchasing my products. The next menu item you'll want to set is the interval until next shot. This setting builds in a delay to tell the camera you want to wait between shots. This is a variable setting that you'll want to look at from time to time depending on the type of image you're trying to make. If you're shooting a close-up image and you're firing off electronic strobe, you'll want to build in a little time between the shots to give the flash enough time to recharge. So you may want to put this setting at like 3 to 5 seconds. If you're shooting available light and have a subject that might move, the faster you can shoot, the better. So for my landscapes, I usually set mine on zero delay, but if I'm shooting close-up stack with electronic strobe, I set it for about three seconds to make sure that the flashes have time to recharge between shots. This next parameter that you can set is first frame exposure lock. This will take your first frame exposure and lock it in so that all the other exposures in the stack are the same. 
this is a good thing to have so there's not any variation in the exposure throughout your stack. I, however, leave this off because I'm mostly shooting in manual mode, so it doesn't matter at that point. But if you're gonna be shooting in one of the auto exposure modes, this is a good option to have on. Now you're ready to go to make your first in-camera focus stack. To begin with, I always shoot a shot of my fingers at the beginning and at the end of a stack to make it easily identifiable in Lightroom that I've started and ended a focus stack. In doing a close-up stack, I try to make my first focus in front of the subject that I want in focus. For this, I switch to a single point focusing that I've set one of the function buttons for on the Z9. I have a video called Nikon Z9 Top 5 Wildlife Settings that steps you through how to set custom buttons like this. I'll leave a link up here for that video. I want to focus on something in front of my subject, so I'll use whatever I have handy, like a pair of tweezers, I'll focus on something that's in front, so when in Lightroom, I can always toss out any of these images that are not in focus, just to make sure that I have everything that I'm going to need in this focus stack. Once I have my first focus, I go to the menu, move the selectors to the right, highlight the start button, and press OK, and then the camera starts firing on its own moving the focus ever so slightly. You can monitor the process by viewing the top display on the Z9. This will flash the word focus and do a countdown from how many images in the stack that you've created. I just let the camera do the work and complete the stack. One quick note about close-up stacking. Make sure your base of your subject and camera are very stable. You don't want vibrations from the floor moving your image around, so be careful to stay still or leave the room while you're doing a focus stack so there's not any outside influences of movement into your image. If you're looking for more nature photography content, check out my podcast, The Nature Photography Podcast. It can be found on all the top podcast platforms. In this podcast series, we explore all topics related to wildlife photography and landscape work. So check it out. Search for The Nature Photography Podcast. Gotta have the word the in there and then look for the little icon of the bald eagle. When it comes to landscape work, I use focus stacking for just about all my landscape work. The possibility of getting full depth of field images without losing sharpness due to diffraction is a fantastic option. When I'm outside photographing landscapes and using a focus stack, what I'll do is first set up my camera, make sure I get the position, the composition that I like, and then I get a good exposure. Then I flip it over on the manual to make sure that all those exposures are the same. You can use exposure lock, but just this is the way I do it. Then what I'll do, very first thing, is I'll take a picture of my fingertips. That way I know in Lightroom that that's the beginning of a stack or an end of a stack, and I can just grab those pictures in between. Then what I'll do is grab my focus, and so I'll find a little spot down here, and in fact, I'm going to end up focusing on the front of this rock down here. That's going to be the front of my image. Make sure that that's in focus. And I use single point. I have a little button set up here so I can use the single point. Press that and then auto focus right there. Make sure it's nice and sharp. Shooting at f5.6. So my depth of field isn't huge, but it's certainly going to be good enough. Then I go ahead and go into my menu. Hit focus shift shooting. And then the start button comes up and I just hit start. And then I don't touch the camera, and I just let it fire. So that was about 20 images. So with a wide angle lens set at 14 millimeters, f5.6, doesn't take a lot of images to do a landscape stack. So now I'm set. What I'm going to do is grab another setup. I start by getting a good overall exposure and composition. I choose an f-stop that's the sweet part of my lens, about two stops over wide open on whatever lens I'm using. 
Once there, I switch over to manual exposure so all images are going to be the same from an exposure standpoint. Like with close-up stacks, I shoot a shot of my fingers to remind me where the focus stack begins. Then I move my focus point to the bottom edge of the frame or the closest thing to me that I need to have in focus. Then I make sure the tripod is locked down and everything is steady and stable. I go to my menu and scroll to find focus shift shooting. And I've already set up all my parameters. I just double check the parameter of interval to next shot and move it to zero. I simply just move the selector to the right, highlight the start button and press OK. And then let the camera create my focus stack. The camera will fire off as many shots as needed for the focus to get out to infinity. And then the stack is done. I always make sure that I don't touch the camera throughout the stack to minimize any potential problems with images aligning properly when you move into the focus stacking software. When it's finished, I shoot my fingers again so I know that this is the end of this focus stack. Focus stacked images can really let you take advantage of software to create that wow factor for full depth of field images. The Nikon Z9 makes it easy to get exacting results. If you have any questions about this video, leave them in the comments below. Also, if you like the content of this video, give it a thumbs up and remember to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching. One of the things I like to bring with me when I'm out shooting close up subjects is a small bottle of water. I like to use it to create a fine mist to represent that spring morning flower shot or dew covered spider webs. A pro tip I have for you is to always bring something to protect your lens when you're using your sprayer, like a piece of cardboard or a lens cap. <laughs> I had to figure that one out the hard way. <laughs>